Greetings! It's uh, a new morning. It's quite a dismal morning this morning in Jordan. Uh, I am hoping the weather will get better. I'm he he heading to the desert, so the weather should get better. It tends to be very nice in deserts. But uh, what I'm doing today, I'm in my little car again, and I'm off to um, the desert castles. So this is another of the activities that um, uh, Alex Jacobi recommended to me, and this is the one where he said, you really need a car to do it. Um, there's about four or five desert castles. I can't remember all the name. And they're not all castles. Some of them are palaces as well. And they're Umayyad, Roman, that kind of stuff. So it sounds like the kind of thing I really will be into. Uh, and to be fair, it's something that I've been looking forward to. Uh, but I've been fighting my way out of the Amman traffic. I'm now out in the countryside on a road and... Uh, Amazingly, the, the sat-nav says, you know, take the next right turning for Iraq and Saudi Arabia. And you don't get that very often uh, being told on, on the sat-nav. So, uh, yeah, it shows where we are in the world. Anyway, I'm off to the desert castles. So, I'm going up to Qasr al-Halabat. Um, which uh, was originally a Nabataean settlement, uh, then it was a Roman fort to protect the extremities of the empire, and later became an Umayyad palace. And the Umayyads are particularly interesting to me because they're that first one of the Islamic dynasties where there's the whole um, controversy is to, you know, was Mecca and Petra or, or, or Mecca and that, and so the the, the, the Umayyad mosques are the ones that point to Petra rather than Mecca. So they're really interesting because it's on that cusp of change between the Roman world and the Islamic world. So quite interested. And it's all been done up. Um, so uh, I believe it should be quite well presented. So I'm now uh, in the South finally quite interesting. I mean, I'm guessing this is a petrophasing one. Um, I will check later using the the, the, uh, the database on the internet, but w you look at the design of this and it's, it's almost like a church. And uh, this is one of the very earliest mosques where the Islamic style was not yet established. There's the mirab, the direction of prayer. But yeah, it could almost be a church, couldn't it? It's really, it was a new world. Wow. So this is the main courtyard of the um, the palace come fort, and, and later it was even a monastery. Quite interesting. There's, there's a lot of inscriptions on some of the stones. Now these here seem to be in Greek. Um, Are they all in Greek or no? That one looks Greek. I wondered if some of them were Aramaic. Um, but yes, so there's a lot, a lot of Greek, and there was a lot of Greek inscriptions at the entrance. There's also this nice carved stone here, and I like the fact that they're using this this volcanic rock, this deep volcanic rock. It's a really special feel to it. Room. There are no explanations, but this room, I think, was one of the finer chambers because it had a mosaic floor and it also had these decorations on the wall. There's not much of it left now, but uh, was, uh, perhaps one of the, uh, the personal chambers. And another fine mosaic. I wish I knew what all these rooms were. And so here's an overview of the whole complex. This is a really remarkable place. Uh, I'm so glad I came here. This is Corner Tower. Looks very Roman, that does. And the world beyond. The murky world beyond. York. On the far side of the ruins now, and there's a list of deserts. Um, but there are also there are no explanations. I'm not going to go down.
this is the Hammam as Saira. It was uh, built, it's an Umayyad one, uh, built about a similar time as the uh, the complex had just been. Um, and it was a, a spa cum baths uh, complex. Now inside the uh, the hammam, there's been a lot of restoration here and they seem to have done a really nice job of it. And uh, it's quite interesting that the stones are the kind of creamy golden stones, um, the same as the fortress on the hill, but the lower stuff is the black volcanic rock, which is what the Romans used. So whether this means this was built on Roman foundations as well, I don't know. Here's the hammam. Heading on to Azraq, and this is the Azraq refugee camp over there. So I'm guessing that's refugees from the Syrian war. I think it might be those tents over there. We are not far from the border with Syria. This is the, the the road of borders because it goes towards Iraq and Saudi Arabia, but it um, obviously kind of follows the Syrian border as well. Anyway, on to Iraq. Now the second of my desert castles, and um, this is uh, Kaiser Castle Azrach. Azrach is, a, is an oasis in the desert. It's about the only town uh, for miles around, and it's also the furthest point east that I will be going. So let's have a look. Inside the mosque. Yeah. So Kezar Azrach is another of these Roman forts. It's rectangular in fort, like the form like the Romans did build them. Um, and it was later taken over by the Umayyads who built that mosque. So one assumes that is a Petra facing mosque. And actually looking at where we are, I think it probably is. Um, it's really rough hewn stones and they're, they're these very dark volcanic stones. They're always what I would imagine something like Machu Picchu to be like, to be made, made of stones like that. Um, <clears throat> this was later uh, used by Lawrence of Arabia as one of the key places in his uh, Arab revolt. So there we are, Kaiser Azraq. An interesting point about uh, this fort and others like it that were built to defend the extremities of the Roman Empire was that um, after after the uh, the Prophet Muhammad uh, lived, um, there was a huge plague that really badly affected both Byzantium and the Persian Empire and decimated their populations. And I think they fell by about as much as a third. And so a lot of the, um, the garrisons suffered. And so they invited the Arabs, the Ghassanid Arabs in, to man them. And um, it was at this time that the Arabs managed to conquer huge swathes of territories. Uh, and the, the, there are some people who reckon that the two may be connected. So uh, I think that's really interesting that, you know, how disease, you know, like War of the Worlds, how disease can cause the biggest changes um, rather than uh, battles. And I think the Arabs were more resistant to the place because they didn't live in towns.
Right, here we are. This is Azra Fort. And this is the most famous of them all. It's Kesa Amra there. And this is really truly a, a desert castle, or at least it's really truly desert, it doesn't look very castle-y, uh, because it is in the middle of bloody nowhere. And I'm going to go through this desolate landscape uh, to get here. It's Umayyad, again, which I, I'm really getting into these Umayyads. And, um, it's an early Umayyad and the, the Caliph who built it, and I forget his name, I think it's Walid, he's the same dude who uh, ordered the construction of the Great Mosque in Damascus, which is something I'd really like to see one day. So there we are. Let's have a look inside. So, disaster strikes, and this is the danger of coming out of season, in that the uh, the main thing with this, uh, this site are the, um, the frescoes, the Umayyad frescoes inside and that door there which leads to the frescoes is locked and that's what happens when you come out of season sometimes you can't uh, you can't see everything so what I will do I will tell a little bit about this place that I can't get in um, and it's uh, where are we? 8th century um, the Caliph was Al Waid ibn Al Malik, uh, ibn Abd Al Malik, better known as Al Walid the First, and he li he liked to hang out. He liked to chill out in the desert. Um, uh, it's the best preserved of all the desert fortifications, and uh, there's some amazing frescoes that I can't see. So anyway, there we are. This is Kaisa Amra, and uh, I'm sure it's really nice inside. Not a lot going on around here, as you can see, um, except for a bit of an electronic, uh, electric uh, substation that is there. But yeah, so this is um, this is another. Oh my! Well, we we don't really know. Um, there is an inscription on it. It states the seven ten, which would make it all my ads exactly the same as the last place. But they say that the, uh, the elements of this are more Persian. And so it could be earlier than Umayyad, uh, and it could even be Byzantine. And although this is one of the most fortress-looking like, ones of them, um, apparently it may not have been a fortress, and it could have been a, a caravansary, like a, a kind of inn for stopping off on the journey. Um, they don't seem to know a lot about it, uh, according to the guidebook, but uh, it is well preserved. And it, it's got a kind of stark beauty to it. Well, that's from the outside. Let's have a look what it's like inside. So that's the entrance, and it's a two-storey structure uh, around a courtyard. Um, it does look like a caravansary to me. And they say that the what looked like arrow slits, um, they were probably just to let in light. Now there's loads of rooms in this, lots of small rooms. Which, since caravansaries were essentially like inns and stables combined, that, that would make sense. Um, and these ones, there's a bit more light in these, so you can see them. So this, this kind of goes 
the full length to the, they're the arrow slits to let in the light, the, the full length of the building. And then there are two layers of rooms, and I bet we can't see anything much in this one. No, way too dark. But um, <clears throat> I think it looks like an inn. That, that is what most scholars seem to think it is. Um, and according to the, um, the notice on the front, if it is an inn or a caravansaray, a, a khan, it is uh, the earliest Islamic one that there is. Which is pretty amazing, uh, since they are a feature of the Islamic world. I'm going to see if I can get upstairs. So here we are upstairs. It looks, I guess, like more of the same, which would suggest an inn. It doesn't seem to be defensive at all, because it would actually be very hard to defend because you can't see who's coming at you. There we are. So is this the oldest inn in the Islamic world? Wow. Yeah. I'm now at my final desert castle, except it's not in the desert, it's next to the airport, that's the airport perimeter road, and it's not a castle, it's a palace. This is Kasir al Mushata, which is, I believe, an Umayyad palace. Let's have a look. So the palace, early Umayyad again, 740s I think, this was, it's, what, I mean look at the scale of this place, yeah? It's huge. This central bit would have been like the ceremonial way. So I'd be walking through the main entrance to the palace. And then off on either side, there would have been the rooms where, you know, the day-to-day -day activities took place. Um, and it's it's square in shape, like, like well, I think virtually everything we've seen today. So um, it was never finished, apparently, uh, because um, it... it the, the Umayyads collapsed and, and the, the Abbasids came in. They did use it for a while, so it was used, but never completely finished. Uh, and then there was an earthquake in the 9th century which killed it off. Uh, and apparently, part of the western facade, which I think we're approaching from the south, so that would be that way, uh, was taken off to um, Germany uh, as, as uh, thanks for the Hijaz Railway. So here we are. I mean, look at the scale of this place, it's massive. Back end of the palace, there's the airport kind of control towers and stuff. And I mean, it is in a bad state, but it's still a pretty spectacular monument. <clears throat> I don't know how much of this brickwork to rebuild. Uh, what today has shown me um, is that actually um, the only are really worth finding more about. So I think my, my job now is to to kind of go away and get a book about them and read a bit more about their history uh, and their culture because I find them fascinating. Um, before, you know, I've, I've been to kind of a lot of Middle Eastern countries and, you know, Fatimid, Umayyad, Abbasid, their words, they all just kind of fall into one another and didn't really mean anything to me. And yet now I find that I'm beginning to understand uh, kind of which era was which and how they all affected one another which is when all said and what travel's about it's about it's about knowledge it's about learning stuff um i'm really glad that i've been on this journey today uh looking around these i say call them desert castles i mean most of them weren't castles because it, more than anything else i've seen except of course petra jordan's history is beginning to make sense to me now and, and from being this kind of vague, 
oriental exotic deserty place it, it's now somewhere that all ah, right i see how those pieces in the jigsaw fit and that is is what i love about travel when you take something that is is totally unknown and you and you make it make sense um so yeah if anybody ever comes to jordan really i can't recommend doing this circuit enough Th there are other castles you can visit but apparently these are the best five but to be fair oh look that's a plane you see oh, hey airline side i don't even know what airline that is maybe it's jordanian it would kind of make sense wouldn't it yeah um yeah if i lived here if i had more time i would go and check out some of the lesser ones but to be fair if i'd have done that i wouldn't have seen the, the main ones and five castles oh well five archaeological sites in a day six if you count the little hammam to be quite frank that's more than enough for me so here we are we're in the umayyad this great umayyad palace on the edge of Amman and uh, I feel very very privileged for having seen all this keep traveling <laughs>